If you're going to make Windsor chairs, there's some things about the forms that you'll want to be familiar with, things that changed over time. One of them is the leg. On the first Windsor chairs, the ones introduced in Philadelphia during the 1740s and 1750s, this was the shape of the leg, this arrow foot. This type of, of leg was used not only in Philadelphia, but throughout the mid-Atlantic states where Windsor chairs were made, and it even made its way up into Providence, Rhode Island. Now the foot has a problem, and that is it's a short element. And so if there's any variation from side to side when you're trimming the legs, it can show up in how much of the, the arrow remains. But still, the arrow foot was used from the 1740s well into the 1770s. There are a number of furniture styles that occur during that time, and so the stretchers that were used with the arrow foot also evolved, beginning with this symmetrical stretcher that you recognize as being very similar to Queen Anne furniture. And for good reason, because when Windsors were introduced, the Queen Anne period was underway. This was eventually introduced, this arrow stretcher here, 1760s or so, and then eventually this stretcher in the 1770s. The stumps also evolved in the very earliest chairs. This was the typical stump put in at a right angle. Chairmakers began to realize that their chairs would be a lot stronger if their stump had forward slope, and at that point they introduced this baluster stump. By the 1770s, Windsor chairmaking had spread through much of the colonies. It was no longer limited to just Philadelphia. And the arrow leg was supplanted by this baluster leg here, like this one shaped here. It has a distinct advantage over the arrow foot, and that is if there's any differences in the length of the leg when you're trimming the chair, it's not as visible on this long taper. At the same time, Windsor chairs begin to explode in the variety of chairs that were being made. It was no longer uh, just sackbacks. They were made as children's chairs, as high chairs, uh, in a whole variety of purposes. So this leg changed according to its intended purpose. It could be made much larger for big, heavy chairs. It could be made long for like stools and for uh, youth chairs, for children's chairs, for use at the table. It could be made small for children's chairs, just for kids sitting around the room. And it changed considerably from region to region. While this leg here was the more common shape, other regions developed variations. This one comes from southeastern New England. This was popular down on the south coast of Massachusetts and in Rhode Island. By the 1790s, a number of things were happening that influenced Windsor chairs. First, they were under pressure. While they were the premier chair, the, the, the go-to chair through much of the 18th century, fancy chairs were beginning to take over some of their market, and Windsor chair makers were certainly looking for ways to cut their costs. Also, American shipping could now, after the Revolution, get into China, and so things Chinese were becoming popular. At that point, 
Windsor chairmakers introduced this leg. They called it a bamboo leg. In this variation of a bamboo leg, there are two swellings. And it was typical for chairmakers to pick out these rings in some sort of contrasting color. This leg, too, could be adapted for other uses, such as a tall uh, stool or a child's high chair. By 1800, things had really changed. This style of bamboo leg was introduced. It's distinguished from the first style of bamboo leg by three rings rather than two. Whereas the first style of bamboo leg used an eight stretcher or a crinoline stretcher, the later style of bamboo leg with the three rings always has a box stretcher. It is, again, the rings are picked out in a contrasting color, and it was not uncommon for chairmakers to actually paint the chair so that it looked like bamboo. Other parts like stumps, styles changed as well to mimic the shape of the legs. Thank you for watching this content. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back frequently for more Windsor chair making tips and tutorials.